Welcome to Ongarup Football Association's Round 10 Wrap for Saturday, June 30, 2018. I'm Gary Bartholomew. With me is Association President for the past 18 years. Good morning, Kim Parsons. Good morning to you, Gary, and morning to your listeners. Two unexpected blowouts on Saturday, Kim. Big blowouts in, um, in actually in both grades, in the league and in the reserves. Um, you know, the, the two winning margins were very surprising that they were as big as they were, but um, maybe that's where our teams are at at the moment. OK, we'll start off at uh, Boxwood Hill in the juniors. Gerald Mungup winning this one, 7-11-53 to Boxwood Hill, 5-6-36. 17 point margin. The best for Jeremiah uh, Jaden Morton, Austin Brown, and Marshall Solomon. And for Boxwood Hill, Bailey Peacock, Mitch Mo- uh, Murdoch, and Liam Morgan. In the reserves at Boxwood Hill, 11 8 74 to Jeremiah Up, 4 1 25. The margin 49 points. Uh, Jared King kicking six for Boxwood, and Dean Hislop, two for Jeremiah Up. And the best, uh, Brett Plain and Jeremy Bailey for Boxwood. And for Jeremiah up Clint Pocock, Tate Barrett and Wiramu Nielsen. In the league game, uh, Boxwood Hill, 16-20, 116 to Jeremiah up 5-9-39, the margin 77 points. Goal scorers for Boxwood, uh, Aaron Davis, 4, Brett Peacock, uh, Brad Peacock and Hayden Richter, 3 each. And for Jeremiah up Lucas uh, Shuts uh, 3 and Benny Lee 2 and the best for Boxwood Hill Bo Vaux, Isaac Baum and uh, Ryan Godbard and for uh, Jeremiah uh, Bill Brown, Jaden Brooks and Connor Spinks. Now the game comment, even contest early Boxwood kicked away in the second half It must have been real early when they wrote that comment too Gary <laughs> Boxwood were all over Jerry even in the first quarter they, they still had 11 scoring shots to 5 in the first quarter and opened up a pretty handy break by quarter time and never looked back from there they had winners all over the ground I mean, they've only named those 3 guys there but Aaron Davis if he'd kicked straight probably could have had 7 or 8 Brad Peacock took some big marks overhead really strong you know, they, they, the Italic boys, they were all, they, they just had mo- winners everywhere. They were just far too fast. Um, the, all, both these games on the weekend, by the way, were played at 16 a side. Just there was a couple of guys away, so the um, two, four clubs agreed to play at 16. And until you sort of counted up, you didn't notice it. But Glenn Peacock assures me when you get to his age, you notice it when you're out there. <laughs> but, um, but there's a, Boxwood have got a really good even spread of young players that they just ran hard up and down the field and, Turnovers from Jeremiah up from the hard running from Boxwood guys just was far too much for them to handle, and they thoroughly deserved a big win. And and um, you know it was a really good win down at home, and uh, you know they've now beaten up No Anger up last week, and and then Jeremiah up with a convincing win, so they're really back in town, Boxwood. And um, you know you've got to give them a chance now after the last couple of weeks, that's for sure. Yeah, we're talking about uh, convincing wins. Uh, no Anger up had three of them in all three grades. By big margins uh, on Saturday in the juniors by 87 points, uh, 13-11-89 to Newdigate, two behinds. The goal scorers for Narangar up are Rowan Hodson and Murray Haywood and Charlie uh, Halloran each three. And for uh, Narangar up, the best were Fletcher Patterson, Spencer Johnston, uh, Jack Humphreys and Xavier McInerney. For uh, Newdigate, no, no uh, best players were given. In the reserves, Naranga up 17 19, 121. Newdigate 2 7 19, 102 point margin. John O. Woods, four goals for Naranga up, uh, and uh, no uh, goal scorers uh, given for Newdigate. Uh, the best uh, for Naranga up are uh, Jared Burgess, Guy Taylor, and Caleb Haynes. And for Newdigate, Dwight Ness, uh, Lachlan Macbeth, and Peter Walker. We move on to the league. Naranga up uh, 26-13, 169. Newdigate 8-6, 54, 115 points. Margin in the end. And the goal scorers for uh, Naranga up. Stanley Long Turner 7, Nathan Wilmont 6 and Craig Bolton 5. For Newdigate, uh, Chris Wollaston 4 and Ian Lloyd 2. And the best for Naranga up, uh, Nathan Wilmont Stanley Long, Turner, Scott Anderson. For Newdigate, Ian Lloyd, Darcy Thompson and Harvey Lynch. And the game comment, the Narangra up too strong against an undermanned Newdigate. 
again, they've kicked seven goals to one in the first quarter to set that up, and then another six, then an eight, and the five in the last. So, you know, they've had a, a convincing win there, but gee, they, they would have been smart and a bit from last week's loss to Boxwood, and obviously come out and prove that they're a much better side than what they were the week before, and you know, the, you can have a hiccup somewhere, but they've got winners all over the ground when they're on song, no anger up, and we say week after week, it's their made, they've just got so many avenues to goal, and you know, when you see those blokes a seven, a six, and a five, and a three, you know, there's, there's multiple goal kickers. You can't keep them all down. And Stanley Long Turner, as we know, he can kick those all in a five minute period and then go miss them for a while. But he can, yeah. he can turn the game on its head when he, um, when he gets on song. And he certainly, you know, he, he's cl- unbelievable to watch. He's really exciting. And, um, you know, he, he bobbed up with seven. And Nathan Wilmot was six. He doesn't normally kick big bags like that. So he's had a really good day. And, Craigie Bolton with these five, but they, you know, they just got so many winners, and Newdigate did have some away, but there's, there's no excuses. They wouldn't be trying to make excuses. I think Newdigate, uh, no, Ingram, sorry, were just too good on the day. The OFA, grassroots footy at its best. We move on to ladders, Kim. Yep, in the ladders, in the, in the juniors, Jeremunga up, still undefeated, although it was a really close game on on Saturday with the Boxwood kids, and um, you know, Jeremunga up just to hold on to win, so they're still clear, two games clear on top, or the eight from eight. Then Noingra up juniors with their six wins, Boxwood Hill juniors with four, and then Lake Grace Pingra up and Newgate juniors with each with one win each. In the reserves, Boxwood undefeated, eight from eight on top, long way out in front there. Lake Grace Pingra up with their four wins, Noingra up with four, and Noingra up are starting to get a bit of a move on now. They started off a bit um, slow in the reserves, and I think you'll find they'll get stronger and stronger than Noingra up reserves. Newdigate making up the four with last year's premiers in Jeremunga with just the one win still on the bottom. Into the league where it's um, it's getting interesting now for that fourth spot a little bit there. No anger up out on top, two games clear, seven wins from eight, just the one loss, and that was a couple of weeks ago. Then Boxwood Hill and Newdigate both with five wins apiece and just percentage there, but Boxwood's got a 17% better than Newdigate, and their game score on Saturday wouldn't have hurt them, that's for sure. Then Jeremunga up just in the... In the four, one game clear of Lake Grace Pingra, but Lake Grace Pingra will notice they've got a better uh, percentage in Jeremung up. So if they can pick that game up, they're going to jump over the top of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, top goal kickers. In the goal kicking, Big Dino Rintour from Newgate didn't add to his tally, so he remains on 22. Craigie Bolton Jr. from Noangrup's bag, five, and he's moved up to 22 to be equal leader. Then Shane Davy with just the one on 20. Um, Jared Offit not kicking any goals on 18, and then we got um, Damon Stewart and Stanley Longturner, both from Nyingrup, with, with um, Damon with two on the weekend and Stanley with seven, both on 17 goals. Well, that all ends uh, Series 2. Uh, series 3 will start on Saturday, July 14. But, of course, this weekend, OFA will be playing in Division 2 of the Landmark Championships for this season. And Game 1 will be on Friday, uh, July 6, at 2.30 start. At the leaderable level um, against uh, Lower South West, and game two at the leaderable level that afternoon will be at 5:30 versus Goldfields. Uh, first up. Uh, yeah, a couple of really hard ones on that first day, Gary. This um, Lower South West have played in that. You know, they've been in a, have been in a section. Um, you know, on and off in the last few years, and re- can take a really good side up there if they get all their side together. And you know, the OFA have got plenty of good players, but they're hard. Just the numbers that the Lower South West can um, rustle up, they, they they'll be hard. The Goldfields, you just don't know because of their, um, you know, their working players and the, the guys that work, you know, shift workers. You don't know how many of them are available. If they get a really good side down there, we know how good the Goldfields can be. But you've got to win all your games to get through to the fi- grand final or, or most of your games. And um, so, you know, it doesn't matter when you play them, uh, you just got to be on your best and hopefully we can get a, a reasonable side up there. On Saturday at 1pm uh, at Left Lane Park will be Central Midlands Coastal uh, up against uh, OFA and then at 4 o'clock uh, versus Mortlock. Yeah, and they don't get any easier either after the first day, but, you, you know, the, the, the better draw are probably those two sides for us, but we'll, we'll find that out when we get up there. They can also take some pretty handy players away as well and... Um, you know, we, like I said a minute ago, we can only take what we've got, what we've put their hands up, and um, you know, we're still a um, couple of looking for a couple of players. We, you know, the, Tommy Pollard in the coach has really worked hard, and hopefully he's got everyone on the same page, and they're going to be up in Perth on Thursday. So we'll find out when it comes Thursday. 
Division 2 Grand Final will be uh, noon uh, at Claremont Oval on Sunday and now my retro media will broadcast all OFA games and those uh, times I gave you, the starting times will be about 15 minutes before those start times will go to broadcast. Of course, we've got the final OFA training uh, run tomorrow night, Kim. Yes, yes, in, in Ongar up there, and hopefully we get um, plenty of guys that turn up for that to put their hands up. We've also got a few young fellas going away and playing the, um, the combined um, Colt side from the, from the um, regional, regional side. Uh, side, and a couple that play with the Storm as well. So we'll have good representatives from, um, from the OFA in those uh, underage grades as well. So, you know, we hopefully we'll get plenty of guys. The experience is really good for them to go up there and play carnival footy, and it hopefully leads to more carnival football. And of course also uh, tomorrow night the uh, RFA general meeting. Yes, we will definitely have a general meeting and um, that'll that'll wrap up for the for the month and that'll just about take us up to finals before our next one, Gary. Yes, uh, anything else? No, that's about it from me. Thank you, Kim Parsons. Until uh, next week, this is Gary Bartholomew wishing you all the best in shooting for your goals. <laughs>